Hey, LVC. Jeremy here with an update following President Kenyatta's address yesterday. I'm recording this on Saturday, the 27th. And indeed, sadly, we are not going to be able to gather on Easter Sunday, even with 100 or 50 or, or really many people at all. We're going to be recording the service once again. And church, it is sad. We had been gearing up for this. We had been excited. We had a whole team last Sunday of gracious volunteers, around 20 or so at McKinney School, getting ready for you, as many of you as could join on Easter Sunday. But of course, we want to honor and submit to the government's decision. I believe it's a wise decision that I respect. And indeed, church, we were leaning this way as elders. As much as we had been waiting for a long time, um, we were looking at the situation over the past week and just realized this is getting really bad. So what do we need to do? Well, the government did make the decision for us. And of course, we want to honor and submit to and respect that. Now, a number of you had been understandably asking a number of weeks ago, like, well, what are we waiting for? Well, it turns out this is actually basically what we were waiting for, this kind of another wave. And so the timing is really hard because, of course, we had been waiting for a while. I confess, I look back and wish, gosh, could, if we could have met a few times in February to at least regather and be together. Uh, at the very least, we did not want to contribute to something like another wave like this that has gotten so bad. So, church, we we are concerned about what's going on. And like you and other believers around the city, we are praying for the current situation. And so, with the government's directive, uh, even the challenge for pastors to encourage and exhort our congregations, church, we got to do what we can to double down right now during this lockdown. So, look, the three W's of wearing your mask, watching your distance, washing your hands. We've got to be doing these things. Number one, you, you go around and you see people who are not wearing their mask at all, as if life is just normal. Look, wearing the mask is so annoying. My nose has never itched like it has in the last 30 days for whatever weird reason. So it's annoying to wear a mask, but look, it's not that hard. We can wear our mask. Very few people have a condition where it's hard for them to wear it completely. But for the rest of us, it's as annoying as it is, let's just wear our mask. Number two, watch your distance. A number of you have to be out there for your livelihood and it's harder to watch your distance, but as best we can, we've got to follow that protocol as well. I go around to, to different malls or I'm out and about and I see people who are clearly from different households going up and hugging each other. And I look at it and I say, I, I get it. And I'm also jealous because I want to be doing that. But we can't. We can't be doing that kind of thing. we got to show love in other ways, including by wearing the mask and watching our distance. And then number three, of course, just washing our hands. There's sanitizer everywhere. Let's just be as cautious and as careful as we can. We can still go out and try to do things in life, like meeting with someone in a garden. Um, but let's just do our best church in the midst of trying to do life to do these three W's and love our neighbors in that way. So what does this mean for the long term? Well, it's hard to say exactly. And of course, the government will direct us on when churches can regather. Now, as we look over these next couple of years, this is just me speaking here on my own. I think as we look at a couple of years down the road until there's herd immunity because of increased vaccination in Kenya, uh, there will be different waves that come along. And it will be hard to say that we can't ever not meet and regather as a church. And so I think as an eldership, we're going to be looking at that to see, because we think we can do it safely. And when we do so, church, we're going to be quite strict because we do not want to contribute to yet another wave in the future. But when this goes down, whether it's May or June or whenever, um, we're going to talk about what we doing what we can to try and regather. Um, and when it comes to vaccines, let me just say briefly, and we're going to have more on this in the upcoming weeks, but as you see news about the vaccine, let me encourage you, if you're 58 and above, if you meet any of those categories, to do go out and get a vaccine. The more people who get vac vaccinated in Kenya, the better. I know there's a lot of misinformation going around. And church, as followers of Jesus, who are called to love God with our minds, let us not give in to any of these conspiracy theories and misinformation Please don't resort to shallow internet research where you could find one or 10 or 100 articles. Let's rely on the best science and data that we can. If you've got questions, reach out and ask us. We have internal experts who can advise on what it's really saying. Nothing is perfect. 
But we want to do what we can to help flatten the curve and to love our neighbors. So church, we love you. Look, sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This is a really hard time. But as we enter into Holy Week, let's think about how our Lord suffered on our behalf. But resurrection was coming. Okay, Friday will not be the last word. Sunday is coming. And we're going to rejoice whether we're together or not, because we have this hope in the resurrection of Jesus. Love you, church.